Hi everybody. Today I'm really pleased to especially welcome Erin Bethea, lead actress in the movie New Life. Now, before we go into this amazing heartfelt movie that really is something you cannot miss, and we're going to talk more about how you can actually get to see it. I first came across Erin about four or five years ago when I watched a movie that she was the lead actress in two called Fireproof. And I remember recommending it to so many people, loved the way it was put together and the way Erin expressed her character in that movie too. And to give you a little bit more uh, exposure on what Erin's done, she's co-hosted the Emmy award-winning TV show on Mission Extra. Is that correct, Erin? That's right. <laughs> okay. So today, Erin's going to be talking with me about the romantic drama called New Life, but it's more than a romantic drama. That sounds so glib. It's actually a very heartfelt movie. A lot of you know me for having helped so many people through grief and trauma and loss. And this movie encapsulates that so beautifully from a very natural, uncontrived place. And Erin captured it beautifully when she portrayed the lead in, in this. So Erin, I'd love you to step forward and talk about what got you into understanding the depth of loss that you portrayed in that movie. Yeah, absolutely. Th thank you so much for your kind words about the film and for, for talking with me today. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, I think initially, I think you spoke with Drew Waters, who was the creator of the story and the director. And initially, just his sort of passion coming from a very personal place of wanting to give a, a, a really authentic glimpse at loss and grief, but also at hope and possibilities and new life um, that come after that. And just having known so many people personally who have walked through grief and having lost some people, some people who were very close to me who passed away from cancer far too young. Um, I mean, one friend in particular named Andrea who was diagnosed with leukemia while pregnant. And so she and the baby were both lost. And that was really difficult um, for me. She was a really close friend of mine. And that was really hard. And then, of course, Jeannie, who I think we're going to talk about, who was a big inspiration um, for the role of Ava. And so I think just for me, it was that challenge of wanting to capture that journey in a really authentic way and in a way that didn't bring any attention to me as an actress, but that my acting performance would be honest to a point that people would see a real person and real circumstances. Yeah, and that certainly came through. Uh, so let, let's go into Jeannie, because she really was yeah. the, the underpinning of all of that. What happened? Yeah, she absolutely was. Well, when we started writing the script, Jeannie was in, I, I was, she'd been through multiple battles with breast cancer for over, over the course of years and it would be great and we would all celebrate and then, you know, a, a year or two later we would get news that it was back. And so she was such a fighter. I mean, just an unbelievable spirit and will to live and had this incredible attitude about her, her cancer diagnoses. And so while we were writing the script, she was diagnosed again. Um, with breast cancer and just being in the center of of trying to write this story of this woman and hearing what Jeannie was doing her positivity and her funny attitude about it and just the things she would say like calling her we have a line in the movie where she calls the people in the chemo ward with her her chemo saves and just their light bright attitude about something that really was hard and painful and hurtful and yet they allowed their circumstances, Tom, her husband, and Jeannie, allowed the circumstance to be a positive thing in their life, to be a time for them to minister to other people in the chemo ward with them and things like that. And so that just became really inspiring to me because that was what I wanted to capture for Ava. I wanted Ben and Ava in the midst of this 
horrible, difficult thing that they're going through in the film. I wanted their relationship and the love that they have for each other and the joy that they have in the midst of what seems like a joyless situation to be sort of a light for people who would see the film. And so just all through writing it and creating it, Jeannie was always at the forefront of my mind and, and reading her husband's blog and their responses was just a huge part of those, you know, sort of layers upon layers upon layers that you build as an actor into what you're doing. And, and then just personally, because I loved her and she and she and Tom are like family to us. Um, I think it just grew this additional depth there. And so she had gotten really bad off and we knew she was terminal um, while we were filming and that her time was very short and that this time it wasn't going to be the happy ending that she had had so many times. And it was just a matter of, we didn't know when. And as it happened, um, the day that we were shooting the scene, that was probably the most difficult scene for me to shoot in the entire movie. Um, because it was the, the scene where my husband shaves my head in the film. And so I was losing my hair that day. And I, there was just, I just felt a lot of pressure to really do right by that scene. Uh, because for me as an actress, it was a choice. And for so many women, it's not a choice. And I just really felt this enormous responsibility um, to do it the right way and feel all of those feelings that these women are would be feeling in that moment as authentically as I possibly could. So I was already super raw <laughs> and, and vulnerable and emotional. And literally, I mean, within an hour of us finishing shooting the scene, I was in my dressing room and my dad sent me a text message that just all the text message said was Jeannie is in heaven. And, um, boy, it was just such interesting timing. I felt like because I had shed this responsibility, I had done the scene I felt the best that I possibly could. And it was this, sort of culmination of what I had felt like was kind of a tribute to her journey in a roundabout way anyway, shooting that scene. And we were 24 hours from wrapping the movie entirely at this point. And I just had wanted her to be a part of it in such a big way and had hoped that she would be well enough to like come out to the set and things like that. And she wasn't. And then to know that really during the moment that it, that scene was happening. She was crossing over um, to be with the Lord on the other side, uh, kind of almost made it feel like she was able to be there a little bit in some way. So it's so interesting because for me, when I watched the movie the first time, that scene was the breakthrough. It was the turning point that moved the movie into a heartfelt drama, into something very, very real. And yeah. you could feel it. It was tangible. You could feel that feeling of mourning on so many different levels, not just the mourning of the fact that their lives were changing, uh, that that there was just so much uncertainty but the mourning of that loss of hair because that that is it, it is another level of mourning yeah and that depth of understanding was there and that that was for me what shifted the movie from your normal hollywood movie that kind of gets the essence of that stuff and you reach for your 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 tissues and you <laughs> well that was quite sore into something that I know with with the process that I work people with they say when you start going to new depths and levels of dealing with with this sort of thing and it's done from a place of open heartedness heart heartedness an authenticity comes in and that's when that movie really shifted mm -hmm. into a place of deep authenticity and I could feel it and I had no idea at that point I only heard later from you that it had right. a connection with with Jeannie and I've noticed this that those most poignant moments in loss and death usually are attached to that transitioning of of the of energy into a new form I've mm -hmm. seen it time and time again. I, I've written a book on it uh, yeah. with Jenny, my daughter, and her having passed on. 
uh, the, the amazing things we're, we're busy doing by way of an example um, a production at the moment that's involving quite a lot of uh, uh, work ab about suicide and and, and uh, depression mm -hmm. and by way of example we're doing her excerpt in rehearsal and a sparrow comes in and flies all around oh. people rehearsing and uh, that was one of the signs I had 12 years ago when she first passed and I never got another one so yeah. it, it, it that's where it goes into real and I and I for me, the other part was the moment that Ava and Ben knew that things were serious and it was more than likely the end of the road, that hidden gift you touched on just earlier, which was because of the knowledge that things would not be the same. They went into a depth of understanding and communicating and being close that would never have happened if that hadn't happened. Yeah. And in this process, we talk about that being the hidden gift and being, un yeah. it, it, it's not about going around saying, oh, it's marvelous that they've died. Yes, fantastic. Yes, I'm feeling okay now. Because Right. That, that isn't what it's about. That that loss is always there for, for the rest of one's life. But it's being able to understand as much as the loss has a list a mile long, mm -hmm. it has an equal length of list a mile long showing where things have become more authentic, new conversations, new levels of understanding and trust and faith. Yeah new communication skills within social circles, within the family, even down to how one handles one's money and how you feel about it, about your work. There are whole new ways of experiencing that would have been lost if that hadn't happened. Absolutely. And, you know, Absolutely. and I think you, you see that a lot in the film when, especially I think the, the film is one of those to me and I'm a little biased because it's, <laughs> it's a story I help make, but um, it's one of those to me that warrants a second watch because yeah. when you go back then, then knowing where they ultimately end up and you go back and you see the start of their relationship is even sweeter. There are moments, these romantic, these genuine, these caring moments with them that become so much more meaningful and so much sweeter knowing where they will end up on the road. And the other part is there are these other things that you see shift in their relationship where early in their relationship, they're worried about such menial things. Or you're, you're working too much. We don't see each other enough. I mean, just like little, Thank the day-to-day, -day, yes. Yeah, just the day-to-day -day stuff that we worry about. And then we see that once they are faced with the possibility of life without one another or Life. Or the possibility even just of this wonderful life that they knew being changed forever. Those little things become so much less important. And the way that they love each other shifts so dramatically. Their, their love is able to mature very quickly in a very short amount of time because of this. Um, well, Jeannie's, Jeannie's husband, Tom, wrote a book called The Unwanted Gift. And that's what he calls her her cancer and her passing is this unwanted gift that ultimately it's not something you would ever ask for, but it shifted their marriage yeah. in in a wonderfully positive way. That would have been lost if they right. hadn't had that. And and even if one was to work through what he gained in her passing, that would have been lost. Uh, and of course, I, I don't want to give the end of the story and the twist. Right. Story away. That would be just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is because that brought him to new experiences beyond his comprehension and gave him in-depth and insight that he never knew he'd be able to ever experience, acknowledge and incorporate into his life. And, and that's, that, that basically is where when one can take, because we're, we're reaching out today with this interview to a lot of grieving people. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where, when you can start asking yourself some very choice, 
powerful questions that are very certain and centered and focused from the heart instead of roller coastering from extreme thoughts and emotions that distract you and take away your energy and that can take a lifetime to get over when you can take these very powerful tools that I work with with people and bring everything into a place of open-hearted acceptance grace appreciation and the most amazing spontaneous love because of that loss then right. you can move forward powerfully and make a difference, make a difference to yourself and to everybody else as we all understand the meaning of life and death because you can't separate the two. We live in a, in a society that's very attached to believing that living is more valuable than dying. And yet the only thing that's guaranteed from the moment we're conceived, the moment that seed goes into the egg is that we're going to die. It has mm -hmm. to happen. And, mm -hmm. and our society, especially in the West, has this great perception that we have to keep everybody alive for as long as possible at all cost and it's right. and it's fear motivated it's not open hearted motivated and yeah, you're, we don't want to think about that we yeah, don't want to want to, that that's so far in the future we don't want yeah <laughs> and it's really bad and yet yeah. that is what new life captured the essence of was understanding that there's more to death than just the loss and why I am so inspired to have partnered up in these interviews with you, Andrew, because if this interview can just make one little bit of difference to the person that thought they were stuck for the rest of their life in their grief, which is yeah. about coulda, shoulda, oughta, all the judgment statements, the regrets that blind and block and distort you into extreme emotion and thought. If mm. this can do that, Wow, that would make such a difference. Mm. So, Erin, I, I, I know that the movie's been available since, because uh, it, uh, it was given award, an award at Cannes Festival this year. It was yes. so inspiring to watch you and Drew there at the festival. And it's been available on the home circuit now in the States since then, but not in European uk and it's just about to be available yes i think it's uh, it's coming available in the uk it either released this week or will release in the next couple of weeks at yeah. some time i don't know the exact the exact day but yeah we'll certainly keep my viewers uh, in touch with all of that because obviously we do have quite a few people in europe and uk as well yeah, and thank you have to watch it uh, Thank so, Erin, such, such an inspiration to talk to you today and to get uh, what an amazing actress you are. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just honor and salute you. And uh, I look forward to chatting to you some more in the future and to see also this go from strength to strength as more people get to watch it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I, you know, we're so honored to work with you as well. We have, it's, it's unbelievable this, I, you know, nothing happens on accident and this sort of synergy between the messaging that you work people through your, your process that you work people through and the ultimate message of new life, which is that that life goes on and that even in, even death is not ever the end of anything. It is simply part of this greater process and you know one of my favorite sort of aspects of new life that i hope people who have lost someone or are grieving and, and you know we grieve over a lot of different things we, we don't only grieve over death so whatever it is that people are feeling hopeless or grief about is this idea that in new life it, it is Ben is so lucky that he has this extraordinary relationship and and this wonderful love um, but ultimately even the loss that he experiences in the long run we see that because he's open and allows himself to feel all of those things to go through the process and eventually move through it it's not that he's lost this extraordinary love, it's that he's given this extraordinary life. 
that he would not have otherwise been prepared for had it not been for what his new understanding is from the loss that he experienced. And I think that's such, if anybody can just walk away from watching the film with that message that your life can still be extraordinary and still be full of love and hope, even, even in the midst of where that seems impossible because you never, here's this man in this movie who lost the girl he's loved since he was seven years old. I mean, he, he's really almost never known life without this. And now he has to look forward, but ultimately we get to see that his life is going to be extraordinary. That's so beautifully put. Thank you, thanks. Erin, thank you. Look forward to seeing where we go with this and sending you lots of love. Same to you, thank you so much, Jen, and I'm so grateful.